Hello everyone, today we are surviving in a don't starve world with nothing enabled because I have nothing better to do. It sounds impossible at first, but there is actually a way to survive a full year this way. Before we begin, there is probably some things I should mention. First of all, all the seasons are set to short. Mostly because I am not sitting through 9 hours of standing there doing nothing. Secondly, world size is set to small to reduce the RNG of the things I need to spawn. There is some things the game just does not let you turn off however, like world regrowth so I just leave them on. Lastly, I enabled the caves which might technically be cheating because nothing is supposed to be enabled, however I did turn everything off in there as well. With that all said, let's begin. Before I even spawn in, you are probably wondering where I am supposed to get food or how am I supposed to survive the night. For food, we will play as Weber and use spider eggs he spawns with to get monster meat from spiders. As for light, it's pretty, pretty simple. All we need to do is find the dragonfly pools, which is where our base will be. Even though dragonfly is turned off, her magmas pools still spawn. As I was walking around, I found a lumpy sapling which the cave automatically tries to spawn. There is nothing I can do to stop this, so to stay true to the challenge, I will just ignore anything the game tries to spawn. Now that we have found dragonfly pools, we can place down the spiders and cook them. And for the night, we will use the light from the magma pools. Except that will kill you. So is this even possible then? Well yes, it actually still is. With this new world I just created, there is actually another way to survive the night. Basically when night comes I will leave the game and then rejoin and just like that a light source appears. In Don't Starve Together there is a feature that does this just so you don't join a server and immediately die to darkness. We will abuse this feature for the rest of the run since it is our only reliable way to get light. I find the dragon flu Dragon flu <laughs> I find the dragonfly pools again and then I go explore the rest of the world because there is still a structure I need to find which will be vital to my survival. Along the way I find a dead person which should not be possible because I turned them off which means that this must be some kind of rare set piece. Unfortunately, none of the stuff here actually helps me, other than the life giving the amulet, which is also useless because I never die, but I take the stuff anyway. By now, you may have noticed that a single spider nest is not enough to feed me, which is why five webbers conveniently joined, gave me their stuff, and left. Because this is Don't Starve Together, Theoretically, I could get infinite supplies from infinite players, joining and leaving. However, I stopped at 5 players, just so this remains a challenge, but just enough so that I could survive. I plant the spider eggs and save 2 for later. The rest of Adam is very boring. The process of killing spiders for food and exploring an empty map repeats itself, so I will skip to the more interesting parts. I find a mandrake right before the start of winter, which I will save for emergencies, and then when winter started, I was in a pretty bad spot away from my base, and I started freezing to death. Luckily I made it back just in time to get warmed up by the magma pools. The rest of winter is somehow more uneventful than autumn because I can't actually leave my base otherwise I freeze to death. All you really need to know is that I spend the time killing spiders while avoiding nightmares that get more and more annoying every time they spawn. Setting everything to none was actually a blessing in disguise because I don't have to worry about hounds or deer clops now. The only noteworthy thing that happens is that I somehow died when I joined the game. Apparently, Clay does not like it when you abuse the spotlight thing, so it sometimes kills you when you spawn in. Luckily this does not happen for the rest of the run. Anyway, 
Spring is here and it is basically the same as Autumn because Rain is disabled. After 3 days I finally found the set piece I was looking for, the marble statues. You might be wondering why the hell I would need statues in order to survive and why are they that important. And that is because there is always a pickaxe that spawns beside them. We can use the pickaxe to enter the caves to survive the final season summer. If you don't know, you do not overheat in the caves during summer, so it is a good idea to spend the summer down there. Once summer started, I expected it to be the most difficult season by far, but just like the other seasons, most of it was just standing around doing nothing. I got the worst possible luck trying to enter the caves because there was not one, but two walking horrors after me. This made mining the cave entrance almost impossible, but I just about managed to do it. Once I entered the caves, I was immediately greeted by my favorite friend and I placed down the spider eggs I was saving. You can feed monster meat to the spiders and then you can get them to turn against each other which is how I got food in the caves. I also learned that punching spiders to death is apparently a viable strategy. While looking around, somehow a few carrots managed to spawn. My best guess was that they were from the bunny villages but I didn't really question it and took them. Other than that though, I didn't do anything special in the caves, except beating up the occasional fat idiot. Punching him to death also somehow works, and I got some very useful nightmare fuel that I can't use. And just like that, it is done. I've survived a full year on a world with literally nothing. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.